Hey guys, welcome back to Virtualized Health. Today, we're taking you on a behind the scenes trip to Epic's headquarters in Verona, Wisconsin, where you'll learn what it's like to get hands-on training by the Epic staff members. If you're new here, my name is Gabriel and I create videos all about electronic health records or EHRs for short. So what it's like to travel to Epic's campus for training. I will walk you through how the training is set up and give you some tips on what to prepare for before coming here. If you ever wonder what it's like to experience Epic's training firsthand, join me as we dive into a day in the life at Epic's headquarters. Hey guys, it's Gabriel. I'm just giving you guys a follow up. So I'm waiting on an Uber that should be picking me up from here. Tired, but excited for tomorrow's class. Uh, it's at 8.30, I believe, in the morning, so I need to wake up early. Uh, but yeah, just a little update. One last thing. Uh, I've noticed that there's a lot of healthcare ads here at the airport, which is pretty weird. But that's just something that, um, I don't know, maybe it's new to Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, here I am finding my hotel room. If you are sent to Epic headquarters for in-person training, you will most likely be booked a hotel room ahead of time because some of these trainings take uh, multiple days. So this will be paid by your healthcare organization. This is the hotel that they gave me. I'm at a Sheraton. And this will be my spot for a couple days. I'm really tired, so I'll probably have to get off soon. But we made it. Thank you guys for watching. This is day one of the journey. Um, and I just met one of, uh, I just met this guy on the Uber ride and he was pretty cool. So he's going to be joining the channel. Uh, if you're watching this video, Hey, welcome. Welcome to virtualized health. Uh, your name's Ali. I remember you and uh pretty, pretty good guy. I hope you enjoy the videos that we have for you and yeah, I just, Appreciate you guys for watching, subscribing, and thank you guys. Hey guys, so right now I just got to the shuttle. We're heading to Epic headquarters. Uh, waiting for the driver. He went back inside for something. But this is where I'm at at the moment. So next, I will be showing you guys the campus, how that looks like, okay? Great, so in this clip, uh, we were driving to Epic's headquarters. So that is about 40 minutes from where I was staying. Uh, it was a long morning drive, but the good thing was that the hotel included shuttles to Epic for free. So if you are traveling to Epic, uh, make sure you get a hotel that's nearby and also that offers free shuttles. Um, it's really useful, uh, especially if you are staying closer to the campus because you're able to get there sooner, earlier, which means you can eat breakfast for a long time and their breakfast is really delicious. So yeah, so here we are right behind another bus that has students uh, also going to Epic's headquarters and we are getting closer to the front entrance of the training building. So Epic headquarters has lots of buildings, which, uh, you know, they, all their staff pretty much work in person. Uh, and there's one building that's specifically for training. It's like this building that's like an S you'll, you'll see it later in the video how the shape of the building looks like. But yeah, so this is training in person. 
uh, currently I'm not sure who like if it's an option to be sent in person or if they can also certify you virtually um I know that after 2025 they're going to start forcing people to get their epic certification in person again so before there was a thing called accreditation that's the same class is just virtually but instead of a certification you'll be given you would be given an accreditation title but that is going away now because covid is no longer a problem and they are switching their the rules so in the future you will most likely be going to training in person uh, than in the past few years uh, but yeah so here I just arrived to the front entrance. Uh, there's bikes everywhere because that's what the means of transportation the workers use there to go from building to building. Uh, some of the buildings are far away, so they just use the bicycle. They're free to to ride everywhere, everywhere around the campus. Um, but yeah, I came in. Uh, so as soon as you come in to your left would be the cafeteria and to the right would be all of the classes uh, but also there's more classes if you keep going further down like passing the cafeteria so this is the map here that I was talking to you about it's like an 8 or an S and the first thing you want to do when you get there is look for your name look for your name because that's where your class will be you'll find out where, where you have to go for your class um, here you're just making coffee so there's free coffee uh, like all day around so you can there's regular milk there's uh, also um not pea milk what is it called oat milk there we go <laughs> and then here uh, oh they also offer you free breakfast because uh, i was mentioning earlier you get there it's like a buffet you can eat as much as you want uh it's all included or inclusive i guess um but yeah so that was during breakfast time and after that i went to look for my class and i got lost actually because like, I didn't know there was a shortcut that you could have made to turn left and get to the class right away. So instead, I did like a whole loop because of you know, how the building shaped. Um, but yeah, like the floors are pretty clean. Everything is pretty clean, honestly. And uh, every room has like a specific name and a specific theme. And I think it was based on UGM, like, you know, their live events they have when where they invite uh, healthcare organizations to come. Um, and I think each room is based on a specific event. So each event has their theme, like Star Wars or Wild West, things like that. Uh, but yeah, like they have lots of art installations everywhere. They love art. Uh, there's this deep space theme uh, theater, I think it's over there. Uh, and then so here I'm still looking for my class. <laughs> Uh, but as I was exploring, like I wanted to show you guys, you know, all these cool artifacts that they have everywhere. Uh, they also have these, um, you know, break rooms where you can just sit down in the comfortable couch. There's coffee around and, you know, you can go outside, take a take some fresh air and then go back to what you were doing. So let's say um, like I'm. I'm sure there's some people that work from here, like some workers, that they come here to the to the training spot, to the training building to, to do some work. So they can come here, they can sit outside. Um, it's pretty nice. Uh, the weather was like 62 degrees, so it's pretty weird because it gets really cold in the morning, like below freezing, and then during the day is pretty nice. Like 62 is not that cold. Uh, but that's the temperature now. If you go there. In like December is probably gonna be freezing all you all like all the time. Um, yeah, so I was just you know enjoying the view. I think they're building something over there. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't asked uh, anyone on what they're building over there. But they're expanding. You know, there are Epic Systems is a, is a billion dollar company. Like they make lots of money every year. Um, yeah, so they're ex probably expanding something there. Um, so here, if I zoom in here, I believe there's like a castle looking thing over there that, you know, you can explore. By the way, if you go there, please explore the campus, like the whole campus. I did not do, do this in um, during my trip here uh, because I, 
I was like more focused on on getting my training done uh, since it was really I found it really complicated initially and I was like freaking out so I was like taking time to like study uh, after class or before class or during breaks uh, so I didn't really explore much of the campus but uh, if you feel like you know you got a good hang on on the information that you've been learning go ahead uh, take a tour of the campus there are slides there are like uh, buildings that have like really cool themes um, but yeah I, I highly encourage people to uh, walk around it's you're permitted to walk around it so yeah hey guys it's Gabriel here I'm on a break right now from the class uh, so during the breaks we are you know told to get some snacks coffee things like that it's unlimited here so you can get whatever you want uh, I had way too much coffee so I didn't get more coffee but yeah uh, I don't know what else <laughs> to record I can't record the classes uh, we're not allowed to but yeah, as you guys can see, that it's really beautiful here. Lots of trees, lots of green. If you love if you love farms and nature, then you feel at home right here. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. And this is day one, by the way. Lots of learning. So these are the coffee break spots that they have going on throughout the training building. So you can pretty much count on having coffee all the time at your disposal. <laughs> so here I'm driving back to the hotel. Um, I have brain fog. I feel like I had so much information put into my head, my brain throughout the day. Um, so I didn't really record much. I just wanted to relax, but I decided to go for a run. I noticed that I was really close to like downtown if I just crossed the bridge so I went on a run and my goal was to find downtown and there have been downtown uh, and it turns out that Wisconsin is known for having lots of bike lanes uh, you don't see one here but I think later in the video you'll see that there are lots of uh, bike lanes and I think they're they're well known for that um, so yeah that's I believe that's downtown um, getting closer there uh, there was someone on a jet ski no not a jet ski on a boat that was doing the that was riding the waves I don't even know what that is called but where you know you hang with a rope and you follow a boat and you're standing up and just gliding through the water that's what I'm talking about uh, but yeah so here is the next day day two of training uh, so the night prior to this I had some food uh, at the hotel and yeah so that's just a recap from that last night from that night before um here so i'm driving towards to campus again uh, it's around like 7 30 sorry no it's 7 15 the shuttle picks me up and i get to campus around eight so i get like 30 minutes of uh breakfast time so here i'm eating sausages uh pretty standard breakfast you know um you know always with the view of course <laughs> there's lots of seats so if you go there alone you don't want to sit with people you can sit anywhere uh, by yourself so this is lunch uh they have like some chicken something for like with the uh, pasta here i'm just walking to class again after lunch trying Day two of training. I uh, just wanted to give you guys an update. It's been great. <laughs> I will talk more in depth on exactly what I'm learning uh, when I edit the video, but yeah. It's really nice out. It's like 63 degrees. 62. Pretty nice. Hey guys, it's Gabriel, and today we are learning about data structures and with 
epic smart data elements we also went through orders and we also went through medications but yeah lots of good information Okay, so this is day three in the morning. I arrived to Epic and, you know, again, breakfast. Uh, but I want to get to the point of, like, uh, talking about the training that that I went for at Epic. So I went there to train for my clinical data model certification. The clinical data model certification has three other certifications that you need to complete so it's i think it's one of the hardest certifications to get so the first certification you need to get is the cojito certification and then you need to get the caboodle certification and then you need to get the clarity data model certification so that is the that, that is the pathway to get your clinical data model certification i think there's also um billing clinical sorry, a billing data model certification that might have similar pathways. Um, but I haven't looked into that yet. So training. Uh, training at Epic is actually pretty interactive and it, it works great. So they have two trainers. Uh, one usually takes the morning class. The other one takes the afternoon class. Uh, and you get a folder with all the training guides, all the information for the class, for the day, for pretty much the whole week that you're there or however many days you're there. And you sit at a, at a computer. Um, so I was at a computer, everyone had a desktop and you're giving you logins. Uh, and for this clinical data models class, we pretty much talked about the life cycle of a patient uh, you know, at a hospital, you know, like what are encounters? How do we represent encounters through an EHR? How do we represent um, the, the, the providers entering the data on EHRs? Uh, how do we order uh, things like consults, uh, medication, x-ray orders, uh, imaging? How, uh, how flow sheet data is entered how is it stored and the reason why all this is important is because epic the ehr has a data a database that's different than what data analytics databases use so the database that epic uses which is hyperspace um, that we all you know interact with on the front end is a hierarchy based database which means there is a parent child relationship and these kind of databases work best when you have uh, you know a specific thing that has many different branches and that you want to get that information you know really fast um, because it doesn't have to look at other tables right it just is looking at one table uh, with all this information underneath it all these branches okay so that is Chronicles. That is what Chronicles is. That is what runs uh, Hyperspace. And there are two other databases that are needed in order to do reporting or data analytics. The first one is Clarity. Clarity is the exported data from Chronicles into a relationship type database. Uh, but this database was created a long time ago uh, and they didn't have proper naming guidelines for tables and columns which made it much harder to report on and also it was only for epic data so you couldn't have outside uh, or non-epic data into that uh, database which brings us to the next database which is the caboodle database caboodle is the exported data from clarity and non-epic data and this is stored in a dimensional data model uh, which is based on facts and dimensions uh, i can go in depth on you know this kind of uh, database structure uh, if you guys like in a, in a future video but 
This is what Caboodle is, which makes it much easier to do reporting on. And it's also the, the database that uh, runs the slicer dicer um, application. If you guys are familiar with that, um, that is something you can you know, go on hyperspace and um, do some data visualization. Uh, and that is what these three databases are. So I talked to you about Chronicles, which is you know real time data from Epic. As soon as let's say uh, the temperatures enter for a patient, it's you're able to report on right away. Um, and then we have uh, Clarity, which is uh, the next database, and that one is not real time, and Kabuto is also not real time data. I mean that's the the best part about. I guess the, the good thing about Chronicles is that you are able to report on real-time data. You don't have to wait for an ETL, which is an extract transform load uh, operation to happen uh, before reporting on that data. Um, so there are, you know, reporting reporting workbench is an activity within hyperspace, Epic, or Chronicles that people usually run if they want, um, you know, real-time data. And another thing is that like the dashboards that you guys see on Epic, that's not based on Clarity or Kabuto. Those dashboards are based on, on Chronicles. And what that does is it, it looks through, you know, master files, it looks through items. And um, it's, I think it's more intensive in terms of finding the data, but it's able to do it. It's just not uh, feasible for data analytics. Uh, like, you know, with working with large amounts of uh, data because it, it does take a long time. I remember at work, you know, running a um, reporting workbench report, it's just taking so long to, you know, gather all that information and spit it out. Um, so that's the reason why, you know, they don't use that real time data. So the, the goal in the future uh, would be to have a dimensional data model like Kaboodle, but be able to have real time data. With that being said, I appreciate you guys sticking to the end. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video once again. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with as many people as you can. Those who want to keep learning about electronic health records or EHRs.